Right, so hey everybody, uh, I'll do the usual stuff in a minute, but this week you're going to have to bear with me because I've got a cold. Or is it flu? Or is it? Has it been confirmed? It's man flu. It's the worst case, obviously, you guys out there, know, you ladies won't understand. It's man flu, so it's the worst one I can get. Um, so every now and again, if I do things like... We'll have to just get on with stuff. So... Because I keep losing my voice. Right, I've been watching the forecasts and it's saying it's going to be blooming cold coming in real quick. So, unfortunately, it's time for covers. So, covers are coming on. Uh, they're gonna, we're going to get them fitted this week because they're telling, telling me it's going to be not minus numbers, but it could potentially snow. Uh, and I don't want to be caught. I'm going to wake up in the morning and find three inches of snow sitting around the garden. I'd rather the covers be on because I don't really want snow in my, in my pond because I don't know what's in the snow. Uh, I don't really want the ice bit as well because of my window. I don't want to start making ice on the top of the pond and then that potentially, I don't know, cracking the window because I don't want that. So I don't want any expansion of water. Thanks, Bear. Uh, on the top. So I don't want that. So it looks like covers going on. Also got the major clean today. I, I've always said, you know, if you look back uh, in stage one, stage two, so I suppose it's stage three, the final stage maybe. Da 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 da! Of getting winter ready. So we're almost winter ready now. It's just a case of putting them covers on, getting the filter sorted out, getting them cleaned out so it's rock and roll, and then we can say ta ta and good night to everything in the pond. Got a couple of other issues that have come up actually the last couple of days that uh, I need to let you know about as well. So. So let's get cracked on with what we've got around the pond today. Covers, filters, issues, and we'll deal with that. If I make it through without being very ill and needing to go to hospital with my man flu. Can't believe they got me out here in the cold to do this today. You think about what you're doing. Yeah, and you. Blooming freezing out here. Right, more upbeat, Andy, please. You've only got a cold. <laughs> so, yeah, so filters. Um, drain out, take brushes out. Swish them around, bin them, get next lot of brushes out, swish them around, get them in the tub, then move on. Now, I haven't done my jack matting for at least four, three weeks now. Well, it might have been four. I was trying to leave it till the very last moment to get it done. So, them are done now. Um, drained it off, washed a load of water through it from the pond. So, pond water washed, rushed through the jack matting with the valve open so that just rushes straight out and I can't, there's no, there's no need putting it on the on the garden because there's no need, there's nothing, nothing alive in the garden, plus it goes straight down the drain anyway. So, so you get them done, get that done. Um, now the issue I had that I was gonna tell you about uh, is KH, because we've had lots and lots of rain, you know we had no rain in the summer, <laughs> dry as a bone for donkeys and then all of a sudden it's uh, the heavens have opened and it's given us what we've been missing is um, I always find when it rains heavy my KH seems to drop so again you don't know what's in your water maybe I need to test that one day or did I test it one day I think I've tested it before anyway maybe test that again sometime but anyway so yeah so KH was dropped down to two now it's usually been four and six um, and if you're not KH is oh I tell you what he's used I tell you what go to Koi Fish Johnny's channel and he'll tell you all about KH and PH because he did a really good video the other day about KH and PH and what it is and why it is and all that kind of malarkey so go, on, go visit him because I ain't got time today to go through that so um, yeah so anyway so I've done, done all that now the thing with my tap water is it's got a really good it's got a really high KH level I think it's something like 8 8 or 9 I think it's 8 really high level of KH in it. So if my KH starts dropping, a lot of people chuck a load of sodium bicarbonate or I don't know the names for it. Anyway, they chuck a load of that in and that seems to level it out. But all I have to do is just turn my tap on and away it goes. So, because I'm wa wasted or chucked away or used or blur, a load of water doing me vortex and then the other last two bays is there's about six or seven inches of taken off my pond. So because I've taken that off now, I just turn my tap on 
start refilling with the tap water and it brings the KH level back up. Just keep an eye on it so it doesn't go past the six. Um, I drop it off as it's going there, so every now and again I'm sort of testing the water that's hitting the pond or hitting the, the filter system, just to test where the KH is. So yeah, that's, that's if you ever see that your KH is dropping, or your pH, you're having problems with pH, or, or nitrates, or stuff like that, always test your, your tap water. Because you might be thinking, oh Christ, I need, everybody on the internet says, do a water change. You know, fish are struggling with pH levels, KH levels, do a water change, quick 10% water change. You might be putting in more of what you don't want. So if you've got high pH, you've got high KH, you've got low KH or whatever in your tap water, you might be putting that in to your pond. A lot of arm movements going on today. <sighs> so yeah, always check what your tap water is because you never know what you're putting in your pond when you're trying to cure your water. Um, you're a pond keeper, you're not a fish keeper. You're a pond keeper that looks after fish. Look after your water, the fish look after themselves, generally most of the time. So anyway, so yeah, done. I'm just getting this done now, just on refill getting this filled back up again, and then we'll get this reopened, and then we'll get them cover sorted. I think we'll go this way. Before we disappear, off, no, what disappear, just before we move away from the filter system, I found a load of the, you know, the little balls you get there, bacterial balls uh, that you put in your pond that are supposed to help with your bacteria build up and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, I found a load of them balls here. Look at the, just. Loads of them. Now, a bit, there's, it's a bit of a controversial thing, these pond balls or bacterial additives that you put in your pond because they, they, people will say things like, well, what you need to do, it's got to have oxygen to live and it's got to be dark and it's got to have uh, changing water to, to make your filters work better. So how do they keep that bacteria stuff in a tub with no oxygen for months on end and no water running through it? and Interesting, eh? Um, I think it's something to do with the type of bacteria. There's aerobic and there's bio bioaerobic. I don't know. Anyway, I'm sure somebody out there will know. Um, but yeah, I've always wondered about these, you know, these additives you can put in. They're saying, oh, it's it's you've got to be dead careful. You don't knacker your bacteria once it's all developed. But then you put this stuff in that's been sitting on somebody's um, in somebody's shop for months on end, and then you buy this tub with the little balls or something and. In a clear container as well, so they've got plenty of daylight when bacteria, this bacteria loves darkness. I don't know. So yeah, that's an interesting one, isn't it? How come that works so well? Or does it work? Or is it placebo? Or is it a oyster money? I don't know. Right, there we go. I always like to try to use my little siphony thing to get the little bits out of the second bay where the second brushes are because there's always little bits and pieces on there. I'm trying to do a pretty deep clean this time, which is better. Um, so I just gotta get the, the brushes back in, get these refilled, get somewhere else done. I'm gonna chuck this on the garden.
So I'm going to continue to put filter floss in for the next couple of days because all the filters that I've just messed around with now probably got lots of fines that are just stuck in this system here that I couldn't get out. So this filter floss, you know, on the end of me uh, and this bit here will just sort out those fil the, the fines that I've just created with sort of messing around with the filters. So I use the filter floss just to next couple of days and then I don't usually put it in for the rest of the winter then I just let it sort of settle itself out. There we go, filter's done. Ready for winter. No feeding going on, so no waste going on now. Oh, the feeding. Oh, flip me, let me tell you about the feeding. How did I miss that one? Um, you know, I said I was going down to that, I was I was gonna use the Aqua Source All Seasons down to eight degrees. Flipping heck, I, I haven't used anywhere near even the first inch of the bag. When I did my last video, three days later, pond was below seven. Sudden drop in temperature, um, so I haven't really used it. I've, I've still got most of the bag left. Okay, the fish are popping up every now and again, but they're just not interested at all. So I haven't really used it. Um, I'll let you know if I do over the winter. You know, like I've, as I said, through the winter period, I'll do videos as and when things crop up. But now, interesting one. I've not, I've not used it at all. It just didn't get used. So, hmm, interesting. Maybe, I'd, maybe I left it too late to start the down to eight degrees because it was about nine. So that's only a degree of me feeding at a degree and of course bang it's gone and, it, and the temperature was gone and so I've still got this bag 10 pound bag with maybe a dozen or so handfuls taken out of it that I shall use next spring when the temperatures start going up back up to eight and then go up from there and then I'll go that stuff then I'll go the, the winter mix and then I'll go back to summer when it goes over 15 so yeah uh, I don't I've got no <laughs> I've got no real result on that one because I don't know Fish are looking okay at the moment. Obviously they're a bit miffed, it's gone cold and they're all just sitting on the, on, well mainly on the bottom. They pop up every now and again when I come out just to see what's going on and then they go back down again. Like I said a minute ago, I've, I've been trying to do a bit of feeding but... I have a funny feeling I've got some in the pond that I shouldn't have because a couple of them have been clamped up in the corners. But no massive flashing just clamped up, maybe just because it's cold. Really, really don't want to start ticking them out now when it's this temperature, stressing them out in the cold. You know, they're not enjoying this as it is, so. And again, parasites, apparently they go dormant in winter as well. But it's when it pops out the other end and become undormant. If there's one in there, I don't know, I'm just kind of guessing. Anyway, let's get these damn covers sorted and Nearly done. She's got my window to cover. So yeah, window covering. Um, don't really, I'm gonna to try to keep as much frost free as possible. And I've always said, these things do not hold the heat in. You know, they're, they're just rubbish for that. They don't let any UV light through. So they, all they do is really stop the snow getting into the pond, stop the pond freezing because I have a window and that's about it really. So this is what my covers are for. You know, there's loads of other different kinds of covers out there that we've covered in previous videos. So what about the window? I created myself a window cover last year that basically I use these little hooky things to hook on to the window and uh, cover the window. It's basically, it's just Stevie down the road, my mate down the road, top bloke. He gave me an old uh, foamy mattress and or what was left of it. I think it, it was in the video I put up there. If you want uh, to see how I made this, it's just a, an old foamy mattress that I cut down and so I can hang it on the window. because your pond loses tons of temperature through your window, but it's too late for that now. I'm down to seven, six and a half degrees now. Um, so there, that's, that's good, pretty good.
And so as the sun comes out and shines upon Stoke-on-Trent, which it always does, and the sound of the kettle boils with a lemsip to ease my man flu. <coughs> I've actually just put a bit of a handful of food in actually. Just literally about a dozen bits just in, in the pond. And the fish have just come up and had a little nibble to be honest. It's only seven point something degrees. That's interesting. I don't know, we'll have to uh, see how it goes with the food. So that's stage three complete of the getting winter ready. And I think we're done now. You know, the, the filter box is well insulated anyway. That's, that's it, the inside is, is covered in polystyrene block or sheets. Um, little inlet there, I've just completed the inlet as well. I've taken the, the cover back off the window. You know, it is now freezing at night time. So covers, I think I will just maybe open these in the, in, when the sun's like this, as and when. Just give the fish a bit of sunlight. I might even take this first panel off. You know, it takes literally seconds to take it off and then put it back on again. So maybe just give the fish a bit of sunlight every, every now and again when the sun comes out. And on that bombshell, thanks very much for watching. If you've joined the video, uh, like, subscribe, ding the bell for notification and share to all your friends. Because you might have colds and be sitting in the house doing nothing. Give them a video to watch. <laughs> thanks very much for watching. This was... Quick on lifestyle.